a dancer without a lot of self-discipline to gain the technique because you're turning your body into a dance instrument. But it's wonderful because it frees you for everything. I was taken to see Anna Pavlova dance and it left me kind of speechless for about three days and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Born in Chicago in 1911, Elizabeth Simmons began dancing as a child. She made quite an impression from the start. We performed everywhere, <laughs> including vaudeville on weekends. And somebody saw us and said to my mother, uh, your little girl's talented. She should have a better teacher. Her better teachers would include Russian masters Olga Priyabrishenska and Nicholas Legat in Paris. There she met Bostonian Arthur Mahoney, a student who performed in the premiere of Ravel's Bolero. Arthur would become her partner in dance, in artistic endeavors, and in marriage for the rest of his life. During a three-continent tour, Elizabeth flourished under the direction of another master, Michel Fouquin. To me, he was the great genius of, in dance for the 20th century because uh -huh. He changed everything. He changed the whole way ballet was danced. I came back from Europe a ballerina, but there was no place to practice because there were no companies, and it was only Broadway. Elizabeth danced on Broadway at the Capitol Theater, Radio City Music Hall, and the Roxy. We did ballet, and we did tap. You had to be versatile. <laughs> and I was just grateful that I had a job. As American ballet came into its own, Elizabeth came into her own, changing her name to Thalia Mara and performing as a Fokin ballet soloist. The Mara Mahoney partnership blossomed through the years, and the two gifted dancers emerged as talented directors and teachers. The teaching came really before I stopped dancing because my husband decided that we we're gonna have a company, we should train them ourselves. Passionate about the proper instruction of ballet, Thalia wrote textbooks that became the foundation for teachers around the world. She formed a training guild that set standards and certified teachers. And for a decade, her National Ballet Academy in New York provided ballet, theater, and academic instruction for students who would become principals in distinguished companies. Approaching age 65, Thalia Mara had helped establish classical ballet in America. Her next frontier would be far from the nation's arts mecca, in a state known then for cotton and blues instead of ballet. She was a woman of stature. I mean, she held herself up, and she was very, very, very intelligent. She knew music, she knew art, she knew dance, she knew everything that was uh, involved with ballet and outside of ballet. She had a sign up over her head in the studio, and it's an old Russian saying, talent is work. I've never forgotten that. She felt like God gave us our gifts, but she said, when you have a talent, you have to really work to make it what it is and even better, and that you should never, ever stop working. You have to work your fingers to the bone till you drop. That's what I learned from her. To be, to be able to express yourself artistically, you have to have tremendous self-discipline to gain the technique because you're turning your body into a dance instrument. A musician can buy a piano or a violin, but a dancer has to make the instrument. And you can't do that without disciplining your mind and your will and your everything. She had to retrain us, and the retraining was grueling. Uh, even though I'd been in New York and I'd been studying with Danish and Russian teachers, we went back to the basics. And thank goodness we did, because it was that work that has held me up all these years doing it. Within a year, she had a lot of students back in the school, and there was a real look to the company. There was a style, there was a unity about it. Miss Marr did not have the word no in her vocabulary. If somebody told her she couldn't do something, they just goofed up. 
because she was going to get it done. You can look at the professional company starting. People said, oh, come on, Thalia, that's not going to happen. You look at the IBC coming to town. People thought, no, that's not going to happen. But when she had an idea in her mind that she wanted to do something, she went with it.